Hello, everyone, and welcome to Zero K Exhibition Match Stream. I'm your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we have 3v3s. People have been asking for two, 3v3s and 2v2s for a while now, so I figure, you know what? Yeah, why not? Let's do some. First match today is going to be Astra and Captain Tutu and Average Plan versus CBO, Archangel, and Atostic. We saw Atostic last week with the 1v1 matches they were doing. I suspected there they were, in fact, a team's player, and I'm not surprised they're here going in with the Rover Factory right off the bat. We have Archangel with the Spider Factory and also Spiders from CPO. Given how hilly and cliffy Talon Fort is, this is no surprise to me whatsoever. Astra, on the other hand, going for the Cloakybot Factory, looking to work inside of the little paths that exist within these hills. Same time, gunships are the choice of Captain Tutu, an average plan, going for heavy tanks, which is not that average, but should be pretty effective anyway, especially with the wide open space in the middle. So immediately we're seeing a uh, standard scouting opening coming up from all the players. Actually, all the players but CPO. I almost feel like CPO is trying to play a little bit sneaky, just the way they have themselves set up and how it's going to be a bit of a challenge for their opponents to get there, but at the same time, it's not that big of a challenge. I mean, as long as this glaive gets over here from Astran into the base... That's not going to be a big problem. At the same time, though, the gunships have been spotted. The Locusts have been spotted by a couple of fleas, so this is well known. Captain Two Tooth Plan, whatever it was involving Locusts, is scouted. But then again, this is a team game. So it's a lot harder to pull that kind of cheese off anyway, just because if you do, well, you, there are two other factories that are building units that are probably going to be able to deal with you. So gunship cheese is not the best option to try to win the game. That being said, though, this early in the game, it is a little bit difficult to get around on a map this size, so it's possible that you could separate someone out and win immediately. And that is very clearly what, in fact, Archangel is trying to do. But that's not going to work super well. Like, pretty good damage on the gunship plant, but the Locust will be up in time. And at the same time, though, more darts coming in. This actually is a fair amount of damage, all things considered, and with no defense to deal with it, this could be very easily... One player losing their factory, if one of the commander coming in here and saving the day. Still, though, a lot of damage was dealt in the process. Same time, southern part of the map, bit of an engagement with Astran and CPO. CPO is forced to retreat because, well, fleas can't do much here. They are kind of screwed. So that's giving a lot of territory over to Astran, which, good for them, not so good for CPO, but CPO has taken their backyard as well. And Astran, they're going to have a much harder time doing that, considering they can't climb this cliff. So terraforming or bust. At the same time, though, we do... See, that that's not really their concern. And over the top side of the map, we had the Locusts. Not managing to find all that much value. I mean, Lark Angel's commander here with Lightning Rifle, making it that much harder for them to get in and deal any damage. On top of that, with the Picket to stop them from actually surviving, should they try to attack. So, all things considered, the north side is pretty well defended for the eastern team. The south side, on the other hand, is an opening for the western team, especially with all these glaives coming in here. There is a Redback on hand, with another one in production, but no Venoms or anything else. So, these glaives with the right positioning, could still take the match. Or at least could still take this factory. And ultimately take this side of the map. But at the same time, the center of the map is still in favor of Western team. The Western team is building up. The north side is really the only bulwark that the Eastern team has of any of any kind. And the Glaives coming in here, not really able to deal with the Redbacks, of course, because that just... That's not going to happen. The Redbacks fire too frequently and do too much damage. The Glaives, they don't care! Still doesn't quite work out, but they don't care. Managing to get a little bit of damage in there while the Redbacks can just take advantage of their large enough range to get into the rest of the base. And that is a bunch of dead glaives. At the same time, a few dead Scorchers. Because the Kodachis and Panthers coming in here from Average Plan are making that not really an option to build up there. But again, Archangel does have the northern side. It's a bit less profitable than the southern side, though. So the eastern team, they aren't doing... They aren't doing too badly as a result, but still, losing that southern side is going to mean a lot of metal. A good 14 metal, no, 16 metal, that they just can't get. Possibly up to 20 metal with these top metal extractors here. But it's very clear that they want to deal with that. A couple of redbacks coming in here with a Venom in tow. A little bit out of position, though. I don't expect it to work super well. At the same time, the center of the map, the Scorchers are getting their revenge. Taking out a few Kodachis, taking out that one Panther, not Panther, Blitz. And that... Might mean a few metal extractors down in the center of the map, but all things considered, Average Plan does have everything reasonably well secured. Same time on the southern side of the map. We're seeing a setup for an engagement. A lot of pickets just in case the glaives start trying to get in. But that might not even matter, because the center of the map is clearly the weak point here. The Kodachi will go down, but at the same time, so many Scorches were lost in the process that it just isn't really an option. And despite that, there's also the Scythes coming in here, tearing apart a few Weavers, able to get into the back side of the base. No redbacks are here either. In fact, mostly hermits have been being built recently, so this could easily get rid of a few of these caretakers and make Shipio's life that much harder. 
A little bit of a premature attack, however, that glaive, sorry, that scythe not able to find what it needs. Ultimately being stuffed by not going for the really meaty targets right off the bat. Overall, though, that is still giving West a lot of territory. They have good half of the map. Eastern team, not so much. They are able to work with Overdrive to keep themselves in a reasonable position, and they still have enough metal to do so. But ultimately, it is going to be running into a few small problems, and they do want to get the center control. That's what these courses and fences are for. They are not a bad setup, considering that Average Plan doesn't have much more than these two Blitzes helping defend. That could very well work. However, there is a Minotaur behind that. So assuming that the Orcs are able to get in there and help defend, and the Blitzes are able to defend as long as needed if the Scorchers do attack right now, this could still be a massive blow against the Western team. I mean, sorry, assuming that happens, it won't be a massive blow, but if it doesn't happen, then, yeah, this is the right timing. Unfortunately for Archangel, they are waiting a little bit longer than, I, or Tostic, rather, they're waiting a little bit longer than I'd say is necessarily wise, just considering they have a great timing right now, but the Ogre has arrived. That timing is over. Now, same time, though, there's the spiders coming in. They're trying to get rid of Astron's commander, who's being a little bit greedy, with no protection other than that sniper. Oh, that and phantom, rather. But that phantom is enough. Only one venom was on hand, so Astron's commander did not have to worry about getting EMP'd in the process, which means there is nothing that GPO can do unless another venom comes in there. And they do have one in the back lines, so they want to use that to defend, because they're aware that there's possibility of a bunch of scythes coming in here or other cloakies coming in the back lines. So, really, a lot of this victory here for Astron right now is mental. They have put their opponents on a defensive posture, which just leaves them this entire set of metal extractors for themselves. Over the north side of the map, nice flank coming in here from, from Artostic. There's very little defending here as well, so while there is obviously the counterattack coming in the south side of the map, primarily this Scorcher setup here should be able to take out a handful of metal extractors, with a few of these Nimbuses trying to stop it, but ultimately the Scorcher should be able to take out at least some of the economy on the western side, maybe even things up a bit. A proper split would do it, but no! We're just seeing a bunch of point moves, and no splits from Atostic. Ah, we're taking like two two or three Scorches going this way, another few Scorches going this way. But unfortunately, we do not see that micromanagement used. And do not see the tactics there. So ultimately, those Scorchers do go down. And at the same time, the southern side of the map, we do have the Phantoms coming in here, which the Fleas are trying to find and stop, but ultimately, not having much success thus far. And they gotta be careful, because they go too far forward, but the Lotuses get them. At the same time, the Ogre's coming in here. This is exactly what I was talking about. Front Assault and the Ogre is not profitable. At the cost of all those Scorchers, one of the Ogres dies, and the Minotaur can come in here with very little in the way of any opposition. But that's not even the main concern. The main concern, again, the southern side of the map. That's where this battle has been fought primarily. And this battle could actually maybe go Scipio's way. Maybe. But the Nimbus is here. There are no Tarantulas available to help stop that. The Reckless is the only thing, and that's not got the range for it. So ultimately, Astran's still able to hold on to the south side of the map, no problem. Though with all the money available, we do have a boatload of Hermits coming in here to try to take out that south side, and at the same time, a bunch of Scorchers, which will not find success. I'm sorry, they will try, they will do their best, and the Darts will help out, but it's just too much damage. Oh, wait, or there should be. The Ogre was out of position, so actually a couple of Welders will go down, but that's not nearly enough, especially with the Nimbus on the south side of the map, making absolute mincemeat of everything that CPO has built up to this point. And while the Eastern team does have a fair amount of reclaim, they need that just to stay even. And most of that reclaim... I mean, most of the reclaim is really inside of the Western team's base. So, ultimately, this can only last for so long. Right, it's pretty clear that that ultimate... That opening there coming in here with the Cloakybot Factory, making it difficult for the shield for the Spiders to get anywhere, and opening the South Side has given the Western team... Enough of an economic lead that allows them to build up, as well, setting up the center. I mean, really, Average Plan really pushed the center. The use of tanks was an intelligent move, because in 1v1, that's not as easy. In 1v1, you have to deal with the fact that tanks take a while to set up, but in 2v2 or 3v3, your teammates can cover you as you're building. Like, yeah, you do have some options in 1v1, but it's just not... It's not the same level of power as here, where the 1v1, or rather, the tanks team, tanks player, can just go. They can build the big stuff, they can build enough of it that they can keep themselves alive. And ultimately, they can have that strong defensive line in the center of the map that allows them to maintain the control over half the map. And that's a really good jumping off point. And again, the top side is the only side where we've seen any real progress made. But Archangel, while well, they have their spiders and they are managing to get a bit of damage in here, it's not nearly going to be enough as these blitzes get around the back lines. 
should be able to get rid of the rest of whatever's on these planes. And with that, it's counterattack coming in here from CPO, which is also going to have a very difficult time finding much mileage. The arc, the, the tarantula is really good. That was an extremely wise move, but again, Phantoms are here. They're going to make the tarantula's lives very short. Oh, but this flank, never mind. The hermit flank coming in here, getting rid of Astro's commander. That is a clever move. Astro's commander is still in a bit of a tight spot, but it's dead. Not just a tight spot, a dead spot. And that is going to be a single dead commander coming from the western side. So, first commander kill, but at the cost of a bunch of metal extractors, and ultimately the cost of a large part of that army as well. It's very clear right now that GPO is the main focus of the economy. The money is going to GPO's base. It's being used to try to build it as much as possible in order to be able to push through the southern side. That's helped to an extent. It stopped the commander. It makes it a lot harder to rebuild this front line without losing your builders. But at the same time, the top side front line is still in a tight position. Actually, it's just in a bad position, all things considered. The blitzes are taking out metal extractors left and right. Not a lot of defenses are set up to deal with them. And at the same time, the Nimbuses are still just flying around the map, doing whatever they want to do. So with this... Ooh. Fantastic. Forced to leave thanks to lag. Bit of a shame there. The CPU now has a much larger army to deal with, and at the same time, though, they have been building up a fair bit when it comes to a lot of this force on the south side. So they do have a bit of a flank they can coordinate with themselves. Not sure they're prepared for that, though. See how this goes. The Hermit's primarily the, the attack force and are actually finding a lot of value here. Able to get rid of a great deal of Astran's defensive line, which will allow for follow up forces to get in like these fleas. And take out the phantoms. That is huge. If those phantoms go down. There is not much stopping the forces of Scipio from getting around the south side and taking out Astron's base. There is a Strider Hub coming in to try to at least put some stop to that, but it probably won't happen soon enough. At the same time, though, there is a Strider Hub with a funnel of that will happen with more than enough time to spare. So the planes will definitely be still a problem. Average plan is going to be a massive challenge to get through. But Astran, Astran could maybe be in the problem. And at the same time, Archangel, Archangel either going to lag or quick. I'm not entirely sure what, but now Shibio is playing a 1v3, and this, I don't see them managing. Like, 1v3 in a situation like this is clear that they don't think they can manage either, and that is going to be a game. A bit of an anticlimactic ending, all things considered. But, all the, but at the same time, it was fairly even. It's a neck-and-neck -neck fight. Army value started getting the advantage of the Eastern... De wait, what, really? Oh, wow, the Eastern team actually had a massive army advantage. Throughout that entire game, they had all the attrition... And the metal use is about higher, so... Wow, they actually... Huh. By the numbers, the Eastern team should have... Oh, wait a sec. Oh, right, East is blue. Darn it. Why is East on the left? That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, the Eastern team was doing really well. The blue team... So, no kidding. I mean, in terms of metal use, it's the same thing, but in terms of actual stuff killed, the Eastern team was way more efficient. So, yeah, that... That's an odd thing. Seriously, I thought that if there was an Eastern team, it would always be on the right side. But I guess blue is right and west is... Or blue is right and red is... Whatever. Blue is left, red is right. Sometimes. What? I don't know. Well, the Eastern team should be... Red. Anyway, next match is going to be a 2v2. And, again, because of the weird engine bug, I can't actually tell you what the 2v2 is on... But it is going to be a 2v2. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple of minutes.